believing in you. Maganda, 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 magandang hapon, mga punna. Welcome to Sangkot ng Sibol, our set of interviews where we sit down with young local creatives of all trades and chat about their art whilst answering your burning questions. I'm Mika Bada, your local overthinker, workaholic, and host for today, and I was unfortunate. I was fortunate enough to be here with our special guests, Steph, Floyd, and Chelo Montejo. Woo! Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Happy to be here, Mika. Well, it's not like you had a choice in the first place. Anyways, please briefly introduce yourselves to the people who just might be passing by or who are extremely lost on the internet. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Stephanie Loy, a grade 12 student of Homeschool Global, and I'm from the Trinidad Benguet. I specialize in graphite sketching and acrylic painting, and I collaborate with artists nationally and internationally. I partnered with Lamave Research Institute on an art auction, and I also recently won Bangwan Manila's art contest and also i started a local art business with cello montejo wow lahat na talaga wow okay <laughs> let's go cello so hi my name is cello jayan montejo i'm a grade 12 student my forties are graphite and pen art um i've led some school projects at school and i'm i've also won some competitions i've competed in uh, the National Student Convention, and I've done some work for some organizations and starting to um, help in a fundraising. And also, I've uh, started a business with Steph. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm also very honored to be here. So hopefully, I won't be completely all over the place today. Thank goodness this is partially scripted. Anywho, let's get down to business. But let's start with some warm-up questions. All of the things I'll be asking today were sent by our members through Slido and our IG. Speaking of IG, follow us at Art Club IG. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, first question is, who are your favorite artists and inspirations? I think for me, uh, one of my favorite artists is this painter from China. Her name is Zhao Xiaoli. She's an oil painter, also acrylic painter, and I also love Renaissance painters like Michelangelo and yeah. Michelangelo the painter, not the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, my favorite uh, artist in who inspires me is uh, Juan Luna. He's actually my great grandfather. So yeah, our, basically our family. Also my dad. My dad uh, uh, draws and sketches abstract stuff. So they're the people who inspire me. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Okay. Second question is sent by someone who says, best charcoal and graphite pencil brands? Question mark, question mark. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I don't really use charcoal because I get frustrated with charcoal. But regarding graphite, I really love the brand Derwent. Like, it's the only brand I use. It's really pigmented and easy to blend. So, yeah, that's my recommendation. Not sponsored. <laughs> so um, my re recommendation is uh, Fiber Castle or Stedler, but uh, if you're not messy, I prefer Stedler because it has more pigment. So yeah, go with Stedler. Yeah. <laughs> also not sponsored. Now keep in mind of that everyone and save up your money because it's gonna take over your life. Anyways, I assume this is a question for Cello, but Steph, you can also answer as well if you want to. Where should I start practicing if I want to learn how to draw portraits? So, um, based on my experience, I started learning how to draw uh, the eyes first. Because the face is all about symmetry. So, once you learn the proportions of the face and you master the left and right are, you know, the struggle artist for the left and right are, you're going to get everything right. Because... I also measure from the eyes kasi, so like the length of the forehead to the eyes to the nose. I start drawing with the eyes first. But that's with graphite pencils. I think it's different with painting eh. So yeah, if you want to learn portraits, I think you should start practicing on the eyes. Yeah, I feel like eyes are what make the face really recognizable. Anyways, time for the more lengthy questions. Since you mentioned that you both run a local business together, would you like to expand more on that? 
Oh yeah, so me and Cello started a local art business called Local. You can check out our IG at LocalPH. We sell hand-painted products ranging from bags to notebooks and all the random things. Um, yeah, but at the heart of it is really just love for art and love for service. So yeah, would you like to add anything to that, Cello? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think local was like a spontaneous idea lang. And I'm so glad that Steph agreed to it. <laughs> and I actually really enjoy painting for you guys. Like, while I paint this badge, I, we put our love into it and hoping that you'd love what what's gonna turn out. So yeah, check us out on IG. Yeah. And our next collection. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is a very big fangirl moment for me. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> I'm interviewing them. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Interesting. Now, we had a lot of questions about running a business as an artist and a student. So, first question, like, first big question we have here is, where do you usually start when planning your own business and how do you monetize creativity? I think for me, it's like really finding out what you want to work on and like, figure out a plan for the long term not just for like the day that you started the business but like long term what you plan for it to become in the future and also when it comes to monetizing creativity it's really putting it in a productive way in a way that you can market something that people would want what you do so yeah <laughs> yeah my, actual, my answer is actually like similar to Steph's but yeah when you start creating a business you have to make sure that you won't be drained also and you don't just give what the people want but you also want to produce something that you love doing so yeah so we love making art and we know people love aesthetic bags (laughs) and stuff like that so it's important yeah (laughs) so it's important you that you enjoy what you're doing you don't just produce and reduce just for the people you have to be concerned about what you do also yeah yeah because if you do follow only what people want you'll eventually get burnt out so that's the lesson of the day here kids okay second i mean third question i really like this one because it'll show a deeper insight to loco's core value how do you see yourself in five years from now and tell us about your vision for locale oh my gosh where do i see myself in five years from now probably like in medical school somewhere (laughs) but still um you know i'm sure art will still be a huge part of my life and yeah i think i hope locale will be too like i really want locale to grow into like somehow exclusive and it really you know just markets not really market not so common but it just brings out to the world how amazing art can be and it can be more than you know frames on walls it can be something you wear something you know you bring along to school so yeah one day i just want to see a kid or a teenager say oh my gosh you bought me local stuff you love me so much (laughs) but yeah you know that's wow that's gonna be me (laughs) yeah sure mika where do i see myself Five years from now so before pandemic i was really hoping to be a flight attendant to like also travel the world like uh, painting still but um during the, this quarantine it made me like realize a lot of stuff and then i like now i think i see myself being a full-time artist I think I was also surprised. I was also surprised that I wanted to be a full-time artist, Bila. But I think I really enjoy doing that, and I think I can. Uh, while I enjoy doing something, I think I can make uh, a profit out of it, and I think I could help my family, of course, while doing something that I love. And uh, I hope local would still be ongoing, and I think I I really want us to still be like releasing our collections like in the future even five years from now and i think that i i want local to be known that we we did what we love we produced what we loved and the and then eventually the people will like it that sometimes we don't need to be stressed if people are gonna enjoy what we're gonna paint i mean or like like what we're gonna paint i think i just want to produce what i love without thinking that uh, without thinking of what other people want 
So that's what I wanted in the future, that people will love our art for our own ideas and our own creativity. So that's what I want for Lokal, and also that's where I see myself five years from now. Yeah, and like, I don't know, it's you, it's part of joy of, part of the joy of having Lokal is, you know, like what I, what I want to see from it is like people valuing it as much as we do, like when it comes to art. And like yes. loving it as much as we did when we were painting every brush stroke, <laughs> whatever that item is. So yeah. Okay. For for those who don't know, for the people who haven't checked out Locale yet, I sw- this you can you can take my word for this. You really do see the passion through the brush strokes on every single product that they have. So please please do check them out. Thank you. Yay. Thank you, Anyways, before we end this, I'm going to be asking a couple of spontaneous questions that are sort of rapid fire questions. So, what, uh, let's see. What's in, what to you, what's integral to the work of an artist? Okay, I think for me, I really love this question. I think it's innovation. It's like what sets you different from other artists. It's like what you think of yourself and what can I do to make this apple look like an apple but look like my apple, you know what I'm saying? It's like you want to own it so you find ways on how to own your art and set it apart. Yeah, I think it's innovation for me. I think my passion... I I was going to say something similar to Sess but then she said that, yeah, I think my passion for art uh, I can't really expand on that, but yeah, my passion. <laughs> uh, great minds think alike, talaga. Okay, next <laughs> rapid fire question. Mm, what art do you most identify with, if ever? What do you mean, like like artwork or? Is there any specific series of art or artists, or just a certain sort of look or theme to that you most associate with or most inspired oh. by? I think for me it's probably Renaissance painters and art because I really love the flow and just like you know how it's used like a golden afternoon day in every painting it's so smooth and you can just feel the mood in the painting it's so emotional so I really appreciate that about that art and I try to emulate it in my own art so um I don't know what you call it but I love mixing, for example, the classic uh, um, theme that I did with Steph. I like mixing it with uh, modern stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm actually painting something right now. It's um, statues wearing masks. But Ooh. I'll reveal that soon. But yeah, I that's what I love mixing together. Um, I like mixing different themes together. <laughs> ah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to that. With the masked statues, well, Thank okay. You. <laughs> Next rapid fire question: What's your strongest memory of your childhood that has probably influenced you to, in art? In art, I think it's honestly like water for me. I think, um, yeah, because my dad's a triathlete, and me and my siblings we also, you know, swim, run, and bike. So whenever my dad would compete or whenever we would go for competitions, we would always stay at a resort by the beach. And I don't know, we've always loved the beach like as a family and we'd always go there snorkeling, never really afraid. And I don't know, like and now when I paint, like I just imagine the scenario just like when I go to the beach, like the air I breathe, everything. So that that's just my example. When I try to paint something, I try to capture everything. So, yeah. I swear I'm moving out of the city just because I want to experience that again. <laughs> okay, yes. Chella, you can go ahead. I think from from my childhood, I think it was when I watched this fashion show. I'm not sure what channel it was, but I was watching TV during my childhood. And then I enjoyed like the dresses the people were making and then that inspired me to draw. So I started drawing dresses. I started designing dresses. <laughs> so yeah, that was actually the first thing that I drew before na seriously with colored pencils. It was um 
dresses, fashion designing. I wanted to be a fashion designer. Same. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing from my childhood that inspired me. I have said this once and I'll say it again. Great minds think alike. <laughs> end of end of an statement. Anyways, this is the last rapid fire question. Why aren't Mika? <laughs> why aren't? <laughs> like why aren't? No, like this is one question that I really like asking artists because why art? Okay. Why art? That's a really broad but a really good question. I think for me, art is my way of expressing myself. I also like um creating a world that doesn't exist but in my head and I put it on paper or on canvas mm. and like it's your it's my way of making something mine or like original to me something that only I can do so yeah knowing that oh I made this and it's like unique to yourself yeah I think that's what gives me joy and like it's my gift or a skill that has been blessed to me and I think I can use it to impact others Okay, I'm so happy that I asked that question because I knew y'all are going to say something profound and I'm just going to be like, yes. Was that profound? I felt like I didn't have enough time to make a decent answer. <laughs> That's what makes it impressive, man. Because this these are rapid fire. Okay, Chella, you can go ahead now. Why? All right. Okay, that's very vague, but like I like how it's vague. <laughs> um, Why are it so... I don't know. I really enjoy... um looking at pretty things and art can be expressed in different ways i don't i think some people when they say art i think what comes in their head first is like paintings and drawings and stuff but me for art it's more of like you can put art into your daily life i don't know from the way you dress it could be seen in that it could also be seen on your IG <laughs> feeds. <laughs> I like expressing uh, myself in different forms of art, and I just really love how. And you know, the world is just really toxic right now. So it would be really nice if you if you could just see something pretty, and it would make you really feel good. And I love expressing it because even in this interview, you can see like how much I'm cool on so words. <laughs> so. I don't know. When I started drawing, I I could express a lot, also especially with how I feel. Um, I also have a, this journal. It's actually my diary, but it's more of drawings. Because when I'm having a hard time explaining myself, especially with my uh, I'm I have this I'm ah, I have uh, dyslexia, kasi. so I am having a hard time to talk also, and also when I write. So when I started drawing, it made me express myself more in a way that I could understand myself better and also for other people to understand me better. So yeah, I chose art as a lifestyle. <laughs> it makes me express myself more and make other people understand me more. And it, uh, it pleases me when I see beautiful things surrounding me in this toxic world. That was... Bro, Let's that was... Go, hello. <laughs> Bro, that was so beautiful. Like, when you when you said that you can't really properly um, articulate yourself and the, the way you feel, you express it through art, and that's something really beautiful about your 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 works, like both of you. And I, okay, I I say this from the bottom of my heart, and I really do mean it. Like, you really you really see the thought process of a person when you have, whenever you look at their art, or just creation regardless it doesn't have to be visually or audit or something that you can hear and that's that's so nice okay so i think this is a good question to end this discussion on it's a common one but i know you'll have something important to say about it again but what's the best advice you've gotten and what tips do you have do you give to the artists out there beginner or proficient regardless um i think saying that is my personal favorite is from my sister but i don't know where she got it i'm sure she wasn't the one who thought of it but like she told it to me she said that you know if 
your dream isn't hard, then you're not dreaming big enough. And I think that really impacted me as an artist because, you know, I can do more than using art as my comfort zone. I can do more than just using art to fulfill my own <laughs> aesthetic needs, but also help others, which is why uh, we want to take every opportunity you have, all the time you have, into, you know, really using what you have to help others around you who don't have as much as you have. So, yeah, if there are no opportunities, then make opportunities, man, because I'm sure there are a lot around mm. you. That's what I have to say. Very nice. In summary, if you can't find opportunity, then be the opportunity. Yes, <laughs> yes me. Okay, so me, um, it would be trust the process. I don't know who said that. <laughs> but yeah, trust the process. I mean, when I was watching like tutorials on YouTube, how to draw, I, did, I, re I really didn't understand that, like trust the process thing because I wanted it to be fast. Like I wanted like, my five minute work to look like an a work of one hour but when you when you <laughs> especially when you're drawing you learn how to trust the process because like siempre first when you look at it when you just started you just want to give up because it doesn't look good <laughs> but when you trust the process you continue you be patient with your blending your pag stroke ng brush if you be patient with it and you trust the process of uh drawing and also in your life everything's gonna be better because diba, you won't get a good result if you don't uh work hard on it <laughs> so you really have to trust the process in everything you do so also that also comes to life not just drawings so yeah that's a thing yeah, persistence <laughs> and patience yes remember remember kids persistence and patience that is the lesson we will bring out today thank you thank you talaga Matsala. Salamat, arigato, all the other languages that I barely speak. But thank you, Talaga, for your answers. And and thanks for coming down here to talk. And we at Seabull and High Unite wish you the absolute best in your artistic endeavors. You both are so skilled. Spare some talent naman. Ang daya. Oh. <laughs> And oh, thank you for tuning in into our very first SNS with these wonderful guests. Look forward to the next one because I don't want to fangirl alone. I'm sort of in charge of hyping his interview up, even if it's next year. But honestly, I think it doesn't need much. So keep an eye out. Wink, wonk. Have a nice Christmas break to those who will be having one. And I'll just be getting back to my hobbit hole now. God bless you both and all of you. Bye! Bye.